Okay, we're going to continue to look at our volumes of revolutions here. We're going to take this shape right here, revolve it around the y-axis instead of the x-axis. Now, you'll notice with what we have over here, it's really one shape on the bottom here continuously, and that would be this shape. However, this shape up here changes as it goes up. So we're going to have to do this in two parts. Well, as we do it in two parts, we're going to look at the bottom part, then we'll look at the top part. But since we're revolving around the y-axis, we have to have everything solved for y. So you need to go ahead, take this right here, or not solve for y, but solve it for x. You're going to have to solve that for x. When you get it solved for x, you get this right here. Well, we now need to go ahead and work this out. We're going to still start with our basic function. We're going to go pi. In this case, we're going to integrate from 0. I'm going to do the bottom purple part from 0 all the way up to 1. Since we're integrating with respect to y, I need to look at my y values for my limits. And then I need to go ahead Look at my outer radius minus my inner radius. Well, my outer radius is one unit over. My inner radius, there isn't any, so it's really 1 squared minus 2 squared for the bottom part. So you just get your integral of 0 to 1 of 1. Well, when we look at the top part, when we're revolving it here, we're going from 1 all the way up to 2. We need to take the right function, which is the far right one, which is a 1, because you're 1 unit over, minus the inner function here, which is just your curve, but that's what you get when you solve it, because we remember you got to have it with y's in it. And so we get this. And your shape formed is what you have over here. Well, you just get a 1 minus this here, which would be a y minus 1 distributing to the minus would be a 1 minus a y plus a 1, or this. Now you do your just your basic integration and evaluating it, and you get your 3 pi over 2. Now besides having volumes of revolutions, we can have uh, shapes that are perpendicular to our axes, whether they are squares or rectangles or triangles, semicircles, and so on. Basically, it boils down to whenever you're dealing with a known cross-section, and if it's perpendicular to the x-axis, you integrate from A to B with respect to x, and you integrate your um, area of your shape. So here's an example where we have a square integrating from your x-axis from A to B of your square. You do area of a square in here. Or if you're integrating because you're perpendicular to the y-axis with respect to y, it would be the area of the square here. So we're going to start with that same basic idea. We're going to start with our circle. Radius of 2 centered at the origin. And we're going to go ahead and figure out the shape here, which is what you get when you do a square, where the bottom edge of your square is that distance across your circle. So what we're seeing right here in our circle diagram, this distance right there, that's what we're talking about for this distance right here. That distance right there then also tells you how far to go up here to form your square. And now as you go through, the size of your square changes because the how wide your circle is changes. Well, then you also have the whole idea of an equilateral triangle being formed instead of a square. Well, we're going to integrate here, but once again, we're going to have to do our top function minus our bottom function to be able to figure out the radius. Well, your top function would be this right here. Your bottom function would be this right here. In the context of our problem, when you solve this for y, your top function is this, your bottom function is that. So this is your top function when you solve it for y, and this is your bottom function when you solve it for y. 
So your radius then is really top minus the bottom. So your top function, which we just talked about here, minus your bottom function, the negative root. Well, when you subtract the negative root, that's the same thing as adding. So these two come in together to give you this. So our a of x that we're going to be using in our formula, because remember it's always the integral from a to b of a of x dx, your a of x is this distance here, which we have. And then you've got to square that. That's what goes into our integral. Notice we're integrating from a negative 2 to a positive 2, because that's how far our circle goes. And each edge of our square then is what we figured out to be of this, and this side times this side gives us the area of our square, and that's what we have here. So you go from negative 2 to 2. When you square this, you square your 2. You square this root, and it drops the root off. Well, then all you have to do is just integrate that. You can bring your 4 out in front and then integrate what's left inside and evaluate it, and you get the area of this very unique shape up here, right here, to be a 28 over 3. <clears throat> now, the second part of this is we want to do this one over here, which is triangles, equilateral triangles. So you do your equilateral triangle, one-half base times height. You can get your height by using trig or remembering a 30, 60, 90 from an earlier math class. So you get your area to be this. So your volume then is still going to be from negative 2 to 2. Then you're going to have to go ahead and take this right here, which is your area. Notice I pulled my constant of a root 3 out integrate this and you get 32 thirds root 3 for the volume to give you this circular based but equilateral triangles coming through. Well here we want to do this one here where we have the graph of y equals x plus 1 and your parabola of an x squared minus 1, which is really this shape right here. But in the context of our picture up here, so we're going to have to do our top function, which is the line, minus our bottom function, which is our parabola here. And then this reduces down to this here. So when we're looking at doing squares, how wide our square is is given to you by this. Well, we know for a square you got to square one edge. This is one edge, so you got to square it. So you're you're going to have to go ahead and foil that out. So that's just one or the area of one square. But remember, we're going to add all those squares all the way through it together. So you've got to go ahead and integrate that because it's from negative 1 to 2 because we're going from negative 1 to 2 here on the x-axis of your area function, dx. Well, you integrate that, you get this when you evaluate it then. Now, our next one was to do isosceles right triangles. Well, your base would still be the same, your height would still be the same, but instead of making a square, you make an isosceles right triangle connecting these right here. Well, if your base and your height are the same, but it's a triangle instead of a square, you know the area of a triangle is half the volume of a, or area of a, area of a square, sorry, area of a triangle is half the area of a square. So when we're looking at this in terms of volume, we're going to have just half the volume. So instead of being 81 over 10, it's 81 over 20.